All right. Good evening. Oh, man. Um, you know, first off, I want to start by thanking these two gentlemen up here uh, for presenting me this evening. You know, with Ray, he's um, been a great teammate and a great friend. And best of all, he made the game six shots. So, you know, that's great. Um, and man, you know, Pat Riley, when I first met Pat, I was 19 years old interviewing for the draft. And I remember being so nervous. Um, even my family members were always starstruck every time they see him. And um, we've had tremendous experiences together. And in honor of everything, I, have to, I actually have a gift for you. Um, for some context, when I met Pat during free agency uh, in 2010, he pulled out every trick, you know, and it was quite the performance. And as I was starting to stand up to leave from the meeting, he pulled out one last trick. Um, he took out this velvet bag full of championship rings and dumped them all across the table. And he picked one up, you know, and he looked me dead in my eye and he said, you give it back to me when we win one together. Now, when I think about it, it was crazy because I hadn't even agreed to sign with Miami. But that's Pat, you know, and we did win a ring together, two of them. Uh, but I never gave back the one he loaned me because, you know, for whatever reason, I wanted to wait till the right moment. And, you know, I figured this would be a good moment. I want you guys to know a little bit more about me. Um, when I was a kid, I used to take Slam magazines and I carefully rip out the pictures in the middle of my heroes and I would put them on walls as my posters. In fact, some of those heroes are here right now. A lot of them are, you know. I'll never be able to describe just how much the game you built means to me, how much it's done for me. But while I'm so grateful all of you are in this building, I'm thinking of the ones as well who are not. In particular, Kobe Bryant. He was such an inspiration for my generation, and I'm sure all of us in this room. So, I'd like to share a lesson I learned from him. It was 2008, the Redeem team was formed. And we were in Vegas for the start of training camp and we were getting ready for the Olympics in Beijing. We're going to head to Beijing. And I wanted to establish myself as a young leader on the team by waking up bright and early, day one. So the goal was to be the first one at breakfast. So I set my alarm, I make sure I'm up by sunrise, I get out of bed, I put on my gear and I head downstairs. But when I get there, Kobe's already there with ice packs on his knees, drenched in sweat. Now, it took me a minute to figure it out, but this guy wasn't only awake before me. He had already worked out. He had just played in the finals days earlier. Meanwhile, I'd been off for months and I was still exhausted. What he had done that morning was incomprehensible to me. That dedication he had only days after falling short of an NBA championship. That taught me something I've never forgotten. Legends aren't defined by their successes. They're defined by how they bounce back from their failures. And that's what I hope to communicate to anyone watching this, especially the kids. When you look back on my career, when you visit Springfield and see my plaque, it's going to seem inevitable that I ended up here. And that's how I felt about my heroes growing up. I thought they were automatically destined for greatness. But as I've been reflecting on my career, I've realized the accomplishments were anything but guaranteed. The highs I've experienced, they were only possible by how I bounced back from the lows. From those moments when I wondered if it was worth it, or if I was wasting my time, or if I was good enough. 
The moments when I feared I would never grow into the person or the player I knew I could become. And one of those moments after, happened a few years after those Olympics, when I was the one who had just lost a championship in 2011. I never thought that we would get that far and lose. And as soon as the buzzer went off, you know, I, I just broke down. And unfortunately for me, the cameras caught it. There's even a video of it, of it on YouTube called uh, something like uh, Chris Bosch cries like a little girl, which, you know, I find offensive. To little girls, I'm sure you could agree. Lauren, I've never seen, you know, Yolanda, I've never seen you cry like that at all. At that moment, I didn't feel like an all-star. I didn't feel like a champion. I felt like I was 11 years old again, crying after losing a game on Saturdays at Biddy Basketball in St. Phillips. And we lost a lot of games. But that's the kind of kid I was. You know, basketball was everything to me and I put my soul into it. I would watch all the games I could, college, pros, over 40 leagues, church leagues. Sometimes I'd go to the library and even look up old stats. I still remember them too. You know, um, in 1968, Bill Russell averaged more than 19 rebounds as a coach. Spo, you gotta pick it up, man. <laughs> and while we're here, I gotta say it. Hey, Chris Weber. We're going into the Hall of Fame with Bill Russell, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, to me, players like you guys and the ones you paved the way for were superheroes. And I spent every moment trying to follow in your footsteps. I dribbled for hours in my driveway and it was this like rock, dirt mix. And if your handle wasn't perfect, you'd be chasing the ball all day. I play in the park from sun up to sundown, no matter how hot it got. And it gets hot in my hometown, Hutchins, Texas. My family's here, you can ask. Them. Basketball wasn't what I did, it was who I was. Anything with an NBA logo on it, that was like currency to me. You know, Jordans were the dream, which I knew my parents weren't gonna buy. I'd ask for jerseys too, and that wasn't happening either. So this one day, under the Christmas tree, my preteen prayers were answered. Folded neatly in this little box was a Lakers jersey. Man, and you know, as I'm taking it out, I'm just so excited. I'm like, man, is it magic? Is it Kareem? Is it worthy? <laughs> I look at both sides, and it just said Lakers. No name, no number, just Lakers. Man, but I still felt like magic when I put it on. I even go outside and play a little bit. And I was so proud until I wore it to school. But that didn't take away my love for the game. Every Saturday, I watch inside stuff with Amir Rashad and go practice the moves I just watched. I once saw this skinny kid dribbling it up the court, 19 years old, some guy named Kevin Garnett, and nobody could tell me anything after that. I even had a copy of, on VHS tape of Hoop Dreams, and I'd watch it over and over obsessively. Did you know Jawan Howard's in that movie? Does anybody know that? Check it out. And you know, before I knew it, I was playing in big high school games like the one in that movie myself, alongside one of my best friends, Gino Gray. He's here today. At Lincoln High School, we suffered a heartbreaking loss. LHS, what up? At Lincoln High School, we suffered a heartbreaking loss in our junior season, one game short of a championship. And I remember after the game, Gino asking me like, yo man, why are you crying after every game? 
And I told him it was because I felt like I wasn't enough, you know? I felt like all the work that I put in was for nothing. But I never took that to mean that I was wasting my time. I took it to mean that I should put in more time, that I should work even harder. And the next year, that's what we did. In 2002, our team captured the Texas State Championship and a national title after a perfect 40-0 season. Now, I want to put that into context as well. A team from a public school in South Dallas with no air condition in the gym achieved that together against all odds. My coaches, Leonard Bishop and Farron Douglas, are here today. Please clap for them. Playing the game that the way that they taught us was the only path for us, the only path to a college scholarship. And my parents told me, that's the only way I'm gonna to go to school. And I got that scholarship. I got to attend the Georgia Institute of Technology and play in the ACC. My coach, Paul Hewitt, he's also here today. I still remember them giving us these little uh, key cards and you could put it up to the lock and the gym door would open. You know, it, it felt like magic. The gym with AC in it, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was magic to me. Coach, you would have to kick me out all the time. I wouldn't leave. You know, I wanted to put in more work and that work paid off. Less than a year later, I was drafted by the Toronto Raptors. And after shaking David Stern's hand, I got my second NBA jersey. And this one had a name on it. Bosch. Okay, it, wasn't my, it was actually my second jersey. I bought a Ben Wallace jersey back in high school, white, authentic. Ben, what up? <laughs> Still, what I want you to know is that after losing the championship in 2011, I wasn't patting myself on the back for how far I come. I was figuring out how to get even further the next year. Now, I wasn't at the gym at 4 a.m. I was in San Jose. I had just married the love and light of my life, Adrian Bosch, who's here today as well. And, you know, we had to rebuild from a tough season. You know, brunches and boats and beautiful views, that'll do it for you. It's good for the spirit. Because I knew the whole time we were there, as soon as I got back, I was about to work harder than I ever had. And the rest is history. Heat Nation, are you here? I mean, you remember 27 game winning streak, four finals in a row, 11 consecutive all-star games. and. That's if you're a numbers person. Got to have big plays in the finals, back-to-back -back championships. But most importantly, we put touches on a super team of our own with a hell of a starting five. Trinity, Jackson, Dylan, Phoenix, and Lennox. The future. Now, listing out those accomplishments, I know they might seem like they were inevitable too, but I promise you, between each of them, there was a lifetime of work that wasn't seen. Putting in those long days and late nights, fighting that feeling that everything could come crashing down in one moment. And unfortunately for me, it did. When the doctor told me I would have to choose between risking my life every time I stepped on the court or retiring from the game at age 31. You know, after working as hard as I could, the training, the practices, the weight sessions, the bus rides, the film, going back at night to work on my game, after finally making it to the mountaintop, with so much more to do in my mind, so much more to prove, 
suddenly it all stopped. By now, I don't have to tell you that there were plenty of tears that day and in the day since. But in going through those crossroads, I eventually came to realize that we all have it in our power to make the most out of every day, despite what happens, to turn setbacks into strengths. Because in a way, that's the lesson I've been learning my whole life. It's what I was talking to Gino about in high school. It's what I learned from Kobe at the Olympics. It's what Adrian reminded me of after that visit to the doctor. And you know what? It's come true. And I like to think that all of those tears for me crying after a pickup game in Hutchins, Texas, at Highland Hills Recreation Center on Saturday after my dad would pick me up from open gym, the tears on that Laker jersey after the kids made fun of me. The tears on national TV after losing that championship. The tears that came after not being able to play the game anymore. They weren't endings, they were beginnings. They weren't moments that made me want to stop working. They were moments that made me want to work even harder. And when I think about it, they were more than tears. They were the water that made it possible for the seeds of greatness inside me to grow. And they're the reason that that little kid with those thin makeshift posters on the wall is standing in front of his heroes tonight as a member of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Thank you very much.